history GCSE. This is how I got a nine and how you can get there too. But first, for those of you that are new, basically I got all nines at GCSE and I've made loads of videos on how you can do exactly the same in a variety of different subjects. So I've done maths, English, and all of the sciences, and there's probably more. So you can check out them there and I'd whack that subscribe button, turn on those post notifications so you know exactly when I'm releasing new videos. But also I released a poll the other day and basically you decided what video I posted. So if you want to have a say, want to have a little input, then turn on those notifications and stay active. Cool, on with the video. Actually, wait, for those of you that are saying it's fake, here are my actual GCSE certificates so you can see for yourself. Cool, and on with the video. History GCSE. First of all, history was a very hard subject. It requires a lot of content and a lot of application. And personally, it was the one I revised for most because I found it the hardest and I found that you had to do more for it than any other subject. But, I mean, it paid off, and I was actually the highest achiever in my school, getting full marks in one of my tests. So, I'm here to help you get annoyed, basically. Okay, so how I revised was split into four main phases. There was the understanding, the planning, the writing, and then the memorizing. Now, this is how I revised. It might not work for you, but it worked for me, and it works for a few other people that I know who did it. So, without further ado, phase one, understanding. So basically, in this phase, what you're doing is getting familiar with the content. You're trying to learn what happened when, the significance of it, and what it led to. What I did is I made timelines. So what I'd do is I'd make a timeline, a bit like this one. This one was uh, civil rights. You'd make a timeline with all the key events, significance of it, what it led to, consequences, etc., etc. That's civil rights. I had some medicine. I had Cold War and Vietnam. That wall over there was littered with all these timelines. So when I walked past it, I'd read it, give it a quick skim, and learn a bit more of the information. And that was kind of an ongoing process. There's hundreds of these. Now, in doing this, you really have access to what the exam's looking for. So, for example, for Cold War, explain two consequences of something. In writing a timeline, writing down the significance, what it led to, you'll be able to answer those questions. The second question is write a narrative account of some event or something like that. If you know what happened and when, you can easily write that narrative account. You also know the consequences. You can write the consequences in that narrative, getting the full marks. Then there's also the importance of one thing on another. By writing these timelines, what they led to, you can link events, show the significance of one for another and how the two events were related and how they impacted one another. Now obviously that was specific to the Cold War but the principles behind that relate to every single topic. Now you'll come across questions where you don't actually need content. It'll be more reading based and saying what's true, what's false, etc. You might be asked to pick out a source and analyse that source and now those just require practice. So just sit down, do a few practice questions on those and get better at them. You can't memorise what's going to come up, you just have to practice so that you're prepared for when something does come up. For the essays and things that are based on content, this understanding phase is critical because you get to grips with the content and kind of understand how you can apply that to the question but it also allows you to proceed to step two planning this step is quite straightforward all you have to do is get an idea of what they might ask you so what i did is i asked all my teachers what questions they think could come up and what they could possibly ask or what they thought might be asked and they gave me sheets a little bit like this it would have a load of questions that might be able to be asked then I would quite simply just plan an answer to every single one of those questions. Yeah, I know it takes a while, but I thought that this was a very significant method because I'd be planning to answer a whole range of questions, but also if a question that came up wasn't exactly like that, I still have a vague idea of how to answer it because I literally planned thousands of questions. Well, probably not thousands, but you, you get the point. And then once I planned them, again, I'd make posters or I'd make cue cards on these plans. So for example, poster, poster, cue cards, plans. Quite simply, that was the planning phase. I just do that for every possible question that I thought could be asked. And this was the main bulk of my revision because I just sit down an hour a day or an hour a week, whatever you're doing, and just plan a few essays. So you got to do. But it also helps you to understand the content, memorize it, and learn how to actually write an essay for it. Which brings us quite nicely to our third step, actually writing some of these essays. So you've got the plan, you've got the content, you've kind of merged the understanding a bit now it's time to focus on the exam technique. What you should do is use that plan and actually sit down for 40 minutes, an hour, and write an essay. 12 marker, 60 marker, 20 marker, no matter what, just sit down and write one, bring it in, get it marked, get feedback, and learn how you should actually shape these essays to get as many marks as you possibly can. Because then you can integrate all these ideas, bringing in the plan, 
bringing in the understanding and bringing in the exam technique to form the perfect essay that gets you good marks. For example, this is my work on the Civil War. These are just loads of essays that I did. Um, each time I'd get feedback on it, I'd learn from the previous essay, I'd work on my timings, I'd work on implementing this better structure that I've been given from my teachers, until eventually I was getting consistently good marks on all of the exams, whilst also memorizing the content by doing questions on loads of different aspects of civil rights. And then you just keep doing that for all of the subjects. Not only are you improving your exam technique, improving timings, but you're also learning the content and memorizing how exactly you're gonna structure some of your answers. So now the fourth and final step, memorization. So at this stage, you have this bank of answers to all of these possible questions that you think they might throw at you. All you have to do is memorize these answers. It's not actually as hard as it seems because you've already got most of the understanding done. You've already written the answers themselves. You're just revisiting them. So you can either make cue cards on the answers with like the key points and learn it that way or you can just read through the answers, learning it that way, or you can try and write a condensed plan for the answer you'd already written and memorize it that way. You don't have to memorize it word for word, obviously, but by looking over all of these almost perfect answers that you've written now, you understand what you have to write for a whole range of different questions. You're really prepared to go into the exam and just smash it out. You've got the exam technique down, You've got everything else down. All it is, is recording exactly what you've written in as concise way as possible, doing everything that you've learned along the way. Cool, I think that's pretty much it, I'm not gonna lie. So, in summary, just try and get an understanding of all the content by making posters, timelines, etc. Then get a list of all of the different questions that you think might be asked, either from your teachers, online, whatever you want. Plan answers to all of these questions. Write some of them to get the exam technique down. Memorize the plans, and then go into the exam and smash it. Cool. Well, anyway, I'm gonna go whack this back, so while I do this, do you mind just hitting the uh, subscribe button, turning on those post notifications, and like, if you want, drop in a like. I'm just gonna drop this back. <laughs> oh my god. That is it for today. If you liked, hit the dislike button. <laughs> If you like the video, hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. I live inside my own world of make-believe.